Hey guys, it is my dad, H. Poet, back with another video. Today I'm going to be asking my dad some very old, old questions before he was even born. So, the first question is, how do savages affected ancient time and affected modern day too? Well, uh, savageness affected ancient times, according to what I read, according to what parents told me. And according to what I analyzed as I got older, affected, uh, effect, uh, savageness affected in, uh, ancient times in a good way, as far as learning the ropes, and it affects modern day in the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? This is why. Um, savageness in ancient time was required, because let's just say like the world wasn't as populated as it was now. You know what I'm saying? According to like factual history, biblical history, which is factual too, um, from what they can prove. Um, also, back then, you had to, like nowadays, they still kill animals, they slaughter animals, but they're not hunting animals in the same way. They might have, in modern day, now they have houses and slaughterhouses where they keep basically animals, you know what I'm saying? So whenever they need the next amount of meat to go to the supermarkets, they just put them through a machine, machine cuts them, machine guts them out, they get, and then they get all the right meats. And then when you go to an uh, actual supermarket, you know what I'm saying, they, they have to they cut the portions. So that being said, in modern day, we don't really need to be savage because of all the technology that we have. You know what I'm saying? All we have to do is use technology to take care of whatever we want, whether it be, whether it be cutting a certain animal up, whether it be... Um, whether it be making, you know, perfect shaped burgers, buns, you know what I'm saying? Like, even our cars, we don't really need to run as much nowadays. Because back then, you had to run. Like, in ancient times, before my time, before my parents' time, you had to basically hunt for every meat that you wanted. If you wanted deer meat, or you wanted to eat meat that day, and you happened to see a deer, you would try to hunt that, and that's what most likely I would have if it was successful. You know what I'm saying? As far as the family. Men, too, was hold to a higher standard. Because those earlier games was more of our games. You know what I'm saying? As you get more into the future, more people can participate in the modern day games, which is driving cars, you know, working in certain job positions. Back then, almost everybody had almost the same, almost, as far as the guys had the same job positions and the women had the same job positions. And not being sexist or not being or racist or nothing. It's just that everybody had a certain job. Men, obviously, we can see is the more physical, physical and more dominant breed as far as physical on the physical standpoints, right? But on the spiritual and understanding side, the women got that under under pack. You know what I'm saying. So back then, since the women would keep the like the tribes. Now, the women was warriors too, but they would keep the tribe safe while the men go out and hunt. So it was required to be savageness. The world around us was savage. A bear saw you, was going to kill you. A wolf saw you, was going to kill you. A deer, what you wanted to eat, you had to work for it to get it. You know what I'm saying? And even if you see bear or wolf and all that stuff, you have to work to fight them or what off. You know what I'm saying? Just so you can have space enough to, to work on what's necessary. So nowadays, savages is not really required, but it's only here because of how the system of America is set up, where everybody's working so much for bills that we're losing the, the value of human, of, hum, of humanity, which is to make sure everybody eat, make sure everybody have clothes, make sure everybody have a, a bit of land, you know what I'm saying? So now, it creates a field of competition amongst men and women. Where now, everybody's greatest enemy is bills. I mean, you know, the goal is to pay the bills, and the enemy is to compete with the other person. So now more people are competing as far as the youth. They're competing on the physical level because these boys, technically God created us to be in a savage, savage more like environments. But we have, so, we have controlled these environments so well to the point that most boys do not get a chance to release release their savageness at a young age. 
basketball allows you to do that. Football allows you to do that. Um, tennis, soccer, all that, that allows you to play on a comp com competitive level. But as far as on a street level, we really didn't have to play those these type of games. But because of how, like I said, people are fighting to get money. People are fighting to get where they can able to pay the bills, have a roof over their home, have a roof over their house, over their head, and uh, food in their bellies. So now it becomes back to almost like back in the day. Even though we're in modern day, but we're still playing old games. As far as, you know, as far as like the savage games that we should not be playing as we get more into the future, but I guess it's a game that will not stop until, you know, the end of the world, I guess the end of the world, per se. And that's my answer for that. Hopefully, I don't know if it answered your question. it necessary for men to be savage to a certain extent if it's to protect a family yes the savageness part of them that that's dormant that's within their body within them that needs to stay dormant until that time but at times you have to practice it whether it be you know whether it be you know not at your family but you have to practice what means you have to Mentally visualize if something was to go down, what would I do to protect my family? You know I'm saying you gotta already play out certain scenarios in your head so you can be well prepared. Since you can't express the savageness to somebody, at least you're not supposed to, at least right now. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, it's necessary, but not as much as what as what we are showing you today. The youth is showing more of savageness. That's not that's not as nest as needed. It's good to be savage, but not to that extent. You know what I'm saying? Where we where we taking each other's lives out. Well, back then, you had no choice. If you didn't do it, you was gonna get killed because everybody was trying to hunt that. Different tribes were trying to hunt that one kill. Two, you're fighting against bears, lions, tigers, wolves, whatever part of the world you was in. The world was not as controlled. It was not as dominant. It was more dominant by animals. You know what I'm saying? So, savageness is necessary, but to a certain extent. Men should not lead, lose the savageness, but it should be kept away until a time of survival or trouble. That's when it should be expressed to the full extent. And that's my answer for that. The third question is, each generation plays games, but are the games played by today's generation necessary? Yes and no. Yes, as far as the basketball games, because basketball and football is kind of like a war-like game. You know what I'm saying? I mean, as far as you're on the field, you're fighting, one team is fighting against the other team, but they are not killing each other. It's just more for competitiveness, for skills, right? You know what I'm saying? So the games are necessary, but as far as certain games, as far as when guys are taking each other's lives for $10, for $20, that game is not necessary. Recently, that's, that's what made me then like the streets uh, no more as I got older. Because when I was younger, I, I'm a millennial. Millennial is a person that we got to see Either the late 80s, 80s, right? 80s to like to the 2000s. That's why we call it millennial because we made it to the new millennial. Everything was always one, 1990, 1990, eight, even further back, 18 before my time, 1800, 1700. It's still in the ones. Everything was in the ones. The second number was going up. You know what I'm saying? But when we made it to 2000, there was no more number. 2000. That's a new millennial. So we call it the millennial babies. You know what I'm saying? Because we got to witness the first millennium, uh, the, the second millennium, sorry, that. We got to witness the second millennium, you know what I'm saying? And just because we got to see the second millennium, AD, which is after, after death when Christ died, you know what I'm saying? We got to be called that. And so we got to see a little bit, We I got to see the end of an era 
of a century. Uh, well, not, I said century. I, I got to see an end of a millennial to the next millennial. That will be the end of this series of interview. Um, this is our director. Don't mind that my son fell asleep. This is our director slash camera woman. You know what I'm saying? She's the one that was uh, taking care of the camera and the video. Hi. What's your name? Lulu. Lulu? Yeah, Lulu. She has a little YouTube channel. Yeah, but that's Lulu. And this will be the interview woman, Mariah Layla. She already introduced it, right? I'll subscribe. Let me see. Boom. Subscribe. Stop going for that. Hit notification bell. And turn. Like. And it's your boy Ancient Poor Amount, man. She asked some good questions. Uh, we were supposed to answer some more questions, but, you know, our director gave us a shorter interview, which 953 is pretty good anyway. But all right, I'm out. Until next time, we'll see if I can answer the rest of the questions. Part two. Part two.